Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayami Maseches Vachem Daf Yud Gimel. We begin at the Mishnah, which is six lines off the top of the Amid. Hapes Achva Chatos Sheshchatan Shaloi Lishmon. As we have learned, if uh, any carbon was processed Shaloi Lishma, thinking that he's doing another carbon, so that mislabeling does not render the carbon puzzle. It's still acceptable, but it doesn't count, you know, towards the owner's uh, uh, obligation, meaning he has to bring another one to make up for that one. Two exceptions to this rule are the carbon Pesach and carbon Chatas, in which if there is Shaloy the Shema, he had in mind a different carbon while he was doing them, they become Pesach. As we're going to learn right now, that relates to any step of the Avoida process, of which we have a total of four the Shechita, the Kabbalah, collection of the dam, of the blood in the container. We have the Hilacha, transporting to the Mizbech, or the Zrika, while he's applying or spraying the dam on the Mizbech. These are the four um, fundamental steps of a Karban, the four steps of Hakrava, throughout which he has to have the proper Kavana. So again, HaPesach Vachatos. In those two, if he deviated, and that deviation related to any one of these four steps, Sheshchatan Shlelishman, he did the Shechita on the Pesach, um, pretending that it's an Eulah, for instance, or Kibel, while he was collecting the blood, Vahilech, or while he was walking, transporting the blood, Vizorak, or applying the blood on the Mizbech, in any one of these steps, if he did it Shlelishman, or, he went back and forth. On one of them, he had the right um, intention. Then he switched over to the wrong intention. Or, he started with the wrong and ended with the right. So, one of either was this, one of either was that. Oy l'shman, v'shaloy l'shman. Or, oy, one of either was shaloy l'shman, with the wrong intention. And then he switched over in the next uh, step. He went back and he did it, Vilishman. In all these, we say the Karbanas are Pisu. Ketzad, what's an example of Lishman? He started off right and then he veered off with Shalai Lishman. Lushem Pesach, he did one Avoida for the Pesach and then come the next Avoida, or Lushem Shlom. He switched to the Shlom. Or vice versa, Shalai Lishman, he started off doing one Avoida for the sake of another Karban and then he switched back and focused. On the right one, Lishma. What is that? Lishem Shlomim, Lishem Pesach. As the mission explains, Shazevachnis, Nifsal Bar Badvarim, because a carbon can theoretically become puzzle through these four steps. If there's any deviation during these four steps, which are Bishchita, or Bekibul, or Behilach, or Bishrika. Okay, so bottom line is there are four essential steps. To the Akrova of a Karavan, Shechita, Kabbalah, Hailach, and Zrika, throughout which, if there is a serious deviation, such as Shaloy the Shema, pertaining to a Pesach and a Chatos, the Karavan is possible. Rabbi Shimon takes exception to the rule. He says, Hailacha, as important as it is, but you cannot consider it an integral part of the process. It's not an essential. Rabbi Shimon, Machshib Hailach, Behiluch. He says, if there is anything wrong with the Hiluch, Right? There's a Kavana Shlalishma during the Hiluch, it's, it's okay. Shehaya, Rabbi Shimon Aymer, as Rabbi Shimon would explain, unlike the other three steps, which are essentials, you can't do without Shechita, without Kabbalah, without Zrika. But technically, you can do without Hilacha. Suppose he brings the animal right near the Mizbech and does the Shechita there, you need, you need not transport it afterwards. You can't do without shechita, or kabbalah, or without zrika. Aval You can get away without hiluch and bypass that step. How? Shechet b'tzanu mizbech b'zerik. He does a shechita right near the mizbech and does zrika from that spot without transporting. Since it's not an essential, it's not considered integral, and therefore, it's not going to disqualify the carbon if done incorrectly. Rabbi Lezer has a different view on Hailacha. 
He says it depends. Rabbeinu Oimer. I think more later we'll explain exactly what he had in mind. Let's just see the you know the statement. Hamahalach b'makom shutzarach lahalach. If he's actually walking, where he needs to walk, then we say machshava peseles. His thoughts will impact what he's doing. However, b'makom shayin shutzarach lahalach. If he's walking, where it's not really necessary, ein machshava peseles. There, his thought process will not affect the carbon. Okay, we'll explain that in the Gemara. But in any case, let's go back. The beginning, to the beginning of the Mishnah, we have a list of four avoiders. Shrita, Kabbalah, Elach, and Zrika. So clearly Kabbalah, according to the uh, Tanakhama, right, is essential and is considered essential, uh, part of the avoider, to the extent that if he has a machshava of Shalei Lishma during Kabbalah, the carbon is possible. The Kabbalah may Is that true? That a machshava transpiring during the Kabbalah disqualifies the carbon? But Tani, we have a price where it seems to say that it's not so, that Kabbalah does not have the same, you know, status as the rest of these steps. The Brayse begins with the Pasuk by Karban Oila, V'yikrivu. V'yikrivu. So we have the Shechita, and then we have V'yikrivu. Typically, V'yikrivu means to bring closer, to, to transport. No, V'yikrivu is a Kabbalah Saddam, it's going on collection of the Dham. And the uh, Rabban actually in Chumash explains that V'yikrivu uh, is, is a lotion of Karban. By collecting the blood in the holy vessel, you are actually elevating the status of that blood and turning it into a carbon material. That's why the Torah relates to it as Vikrivu. Zu Kabbalah Saddam. Ah, to Oymek Kabbalah Saddam, you're telling me it's going on collection of the blood. Oh, yeah, no, the Zrika, it's going on the Zrika. It's describing the Zrika process where he's applying the blood on the Mizbeach. How do we know it's Kabbalah? Shu Oymer Vizarku. What's the Pasik? In the next few words, goes on and describes the Zrika in plain words, Vizarku, so that covers the Zrika, or Zika Amr. So Zrika has been described there. So what then does the Pasak mean when it says Vikrivu? The Kahanam will be Makriv the Dam? It's going on a step which is prior to, uh, to Zrika. Hamani Mikhaim Vikrivu. Apparently, Zukabullah Saddam, it's going on the Kabbalah. Okay, and the apostle continues. Who does it? Bnei Aaron Akayhanim. We learn they have to be a kosher Kayhanim. Should they be Kayin kosher? Right, they have to be a Kayhanim Kshirim as opposed to disqualified Kayhanim, deficient Kayhanim, just like the children of Aaron, Bnei Aaron. Ubekle Shoris, they have to be wearing their uh, garments, Bigde Kihuna, which enables them to do the Avod. So according to Tanakama, this Pasak teaches that Kabbalah has a status like the other Avoidas and requires Kaihanam Kshayrim and Kleshavas. Um, Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi Kiva wasn't satisfied with this um, source. He says, you know, the words in the iron can mean any Kayan and you know, you don't see the garments from here. So yeah, he's looking for another source. So how do we know? Kabbalah needs to be executed by a Kasher Rekayin, wearing proper begadim. We have a Gzera Shava. Namar Kahan, B'nai Aaron. We have the words B'nai Aaron over here by Kabbalah. V'namar Lahal we have elsewhere in Bamidbar. Over there, Bamidbar, Perek Gimel, Pasek Gimel. When the Pasek enumerates the children of Aaron, we have the words Eila Shmois B'nai Aaron, HaKayhanam HaMishuchim. Kayhanam who are anointed, proper Kayhanam, qualified Kayhanam. So we connect. Just like over there, Malahalan, we're talking about a proper Kayin. Aaron Akoyan's children, right? Allah's of his summer. Bikoyan Kasha, Klisharis, who were wearing the Big Dekihun. As the Pasuk there says, Asher Mille Yodam Lachain, they were enabled to serve, they were wearing the Big Dekihun. Afghan here as well, by Kabbalah. It requires Bikoyan Kasha, Klisharis. So this is Rabbi Kiva with his source. Here comes Rabbi Tarfan with a question. Amar Rabbi Tarfan. He says to Rabbi Kiva, I don't understand, you're equating Kabbalah to the other steps of the Avoidah, to the Shechita, to the Halecha, to the Zrika, really? Akapeyach has bone, he sort of cursed himself, he said, I'm going to bury my children, I'll cut off my generations, he was so serious about Torah that they would speak like that, Torah was their life, you're saying something incorrect, Imlo Shemati, I promise, if I haven't heard, Lahavchen ben Hefresh, ben Kabbalah and Zrika, there's certainly a distinction between, there's a Hefresh between Kabbalah and Zrika, you can't equate them, unlike you, who are equating, who are comparing Kabbalah to everything else, I distinctly heard 
that Kabbalah is different. It's one level down. And truthfully, I can't really recall. I don't have clarity in terms of why and how Kabbalah is set apart. To what extent? Pertaining to what? I'm not sure. So I know it is. I'm not sure in what way. And guess what? Rabbi Kiva responds to Rabbi Tarfin's uh, statement by, by actually collaborating with it and further explaining that in fact there are distinctions between Kabbalah and the rest. Um, Rabbi Kiva, let me explain it to you the differences. There are a couple. Three in total. Kabbalah In contrast to other uh, parts of the Avoid like Zerika. We are a machshava is kamas. We had a machshava which is improper during this rika. The carbon becomes possible, right? So, like he's thinking during this rika, I'm going to eat the flesh of the carbon in a week's time. That's called chutz lezmane. That makes a pickle, right? Pickle means if during any of the four primary uh, steps of the avoda, shchita kabbalah halach of rika, he's thinking, saying, planning on serving, either serving the, the carbon to the Mizbech or having it consumed by those who consume it, uh, you know, beyond its time. Tomorrow, the next day, the day after, whenever it's, you know, past its expiry time. That's called Chutz Lezmane, outside its time, the carbon now becomes totally deficient, becomes puzzled to the highest level. Even if one eats it now, he gets curries. So again, comparing Kabbalah to Zerika, the big difference. In contrast to Zrika, where machshava during the Zrika disqualifies the carbon, Kabbalah doesn't work like that. Kabbalah lay also a machshava. A thought is not treated kamas like an act, meaning to say that his thoughts don't detriment the carbon. But Zrika does. Zrika also a machshava kamas. When there's a thought by the Zrika, it's as though something was actually done to ruin the carbon. Furthermore, second uh, difference between Kabbalah and the rest, kibloi bachutz and echayv karus. If one collects the blood outside the, you know, Beis HaMikdash, there's no curse on that. Even if it was from a carbon, because only Shechita or Zrika Bachutz has curse. Zarka Bachutz Anosh Karas is curse for doing the Zrika outside the Beis HaMikdash. Another difference. Kiblu Upsulin, let's say Anan Kayin does the Kabbalah. And Chayyub and Olav, there's no Misa on account of that. He doesn't get, you know, he's not liable to death. Zorku Upsulin, Chayyub and Olav, but if a non Kayin or a uh, deficient Kayin who's unqualified does Zrika, is Chayv Misa. And this we learn from various psukim, various sources, as Rashi explains. So, clearly, based on this exchange between Rabbi Tarfin and Rabbi Kiva's response, we see that Kabbalah doesn't have this uh, ability to disqualify the carbon if there was a machshava during the Kabbalah. And in fact, only Rabbi Tarfin, Rabbi Tarfin responds to Rabbi Kiva with astonishment. Right on, you got it right. Ha'avoida. This too is a lashon of swearing. Swearing in the name of the service of the Beis you got it. It may taste a and smell. I swear, if you veered to the right or to the left, meaning you properly explained the difference between Kabbalah and the rest. Ani shamati ben lefarish. You know, I once heard it, that there are differences, but I couldn't explain. I couldn't explain. But you, you got it right. Ata durish. On your own, you figured it out. And you coincided exactly with what I heard. Wow, I'm impressed. So Ritafim responds to Rekiva with the following words. Akiva, he says, If one veers from you, it's as though he's detaching from his source of life. You're the source of life. You're connected to the Torah on the highest level. Bottom line is, the consensus seems to be that if you had a machshava during the Kabbalah, right, like a machshava of Shalei Deshma, nothing happens. Kabbalah does not uh, impact the carbon. Whereas in the Mishnah it says it does. If you had a machshava during Kabbalah, carbon is possible. How do we reconcile this apparent contradiction? Omar of Alekash, let me explain it to you. Depends what he's thinking. Kan the machshava is pigel, the b'raisa, where we don't reckon what he was thinking during the Kabbalah. That's because he was thinking pigle. Which, as we said before, is a very specific, defined type of uh, scheme that is going to serve the carbon 
in a week's time. So there we say it doesn't impact the carbon because it took place during the Kabbalah. Now, why is the Kabbalah different? We'll see later. Whereas if he was thinking Shlegeshma, it's a Pesach, it's a Chatz. He's doing the Kabbalah thinking it's an Eilah, of course it's possible. In fact, the Mishnah, if you look at the wording of the Mishnah, you'll see indication of this, uh, of this point, that it's specific to Shlegeshma. The Ketani of the Mishnah says, Shazabach Nisso, the carbon could become possible if there was a deviation during these four steps, including Kabbalah. Nifsa. Nifsa means it's, it's possible. Not pigl. Apparently, we're speaking about Shlele Shema. Look, Tani Mispagal. It doesn't say Mispagal, that the carbon becomes pigl. Shema, no, that proves. But the mission is pertaining to Shlele Shema. But of course, pigl, thoughts of pigl, cannot attach themselves to the Kabbalah. Really? Here comes the next question. Why? Really? People can't attach to the Kabbalah? We have a Bryce which indicates otherwise. So before we start, let's just try to hone in on the objective. What's the goal here? At the end of the day, the Gemara will tell us that the Pigal process, as we explained, is a very defined, specific process. It entails a fellow planning on serving the Karban to the Mizbeach in terms of Zrikas Adam or burning the fats or spilling over the leftover dam on the Mizbech, or serving the flesh to the Kayhanim, or to the owner of the carbon, whichever carbon, you know, uh, depending on the carbon, beyond its prescribed time. Now, when is that thought taking place? When is he planning that? While he's preparing the carbon. It's like, you know, for example, a chef preparing a meal. There are two distinct phases to the process. Preparation part, when he's cooking things up, in order to serve them. That's phase two, to his customers, right? So, the preparation phase of a carbon relates to the four steps that we're talking about. Shrita, Kabbalah, Halacha, and Shrika. During those four steps, he can think Machshav Spiegel. But what is the, the essence of the Machshav Spiegel? That pertains to phase two. I'm going to serve it, right, in a week's time. So if he thinks during the Shrita, Kabbalah, Halacha, and Shrika that he's going to serve it beyond the, the right time, that becomes Spiegel. But let's say... During the Shrita, he thinks, I'm going to do the Kabbalah in a week's time. That's not Pigal. Kabbalah is part of the preparatory process, part of phase A, not phase B. That's going to be the end result of our discussion, just to keep things organized. So at this point, we seem to have a kasha. Here we say that during Kabbalah, Pigal doesn't, uh, doesn't play a role. It's not reckoned with, really. That Pigal does attach to the Kabbalah. And the more later will say, well, it depends. He can think during the Kabbalah that he will serve the curb. That's Pigal. But if he's thinking about the Kabbalah, that's not Pigal. Kabbalah is not part of phase, phase B. It's still part of, part of phase A. It's preparatory. It's not consumption. Okay? Perhaps the Pigal Machshava only relates to this Rika. Okay? So if he's thinking during this Rika, Pigal takes effect. Nine Larabis, Shrita Vakabala. What about adding Shrita Vakabala to the mix? Tamalay Maria. Pigal can relate to them too. Vima Achal Ya Achal. Sarzabach Shlamov. Laya Ratza. Suppose that they were speaking about Pigal. He's thinking about, you know, serving it on the third day, right? But Dvaram Hamavim, the Achila Kosamadabra. He thought about feeding it beyond its time when while he was preparing the carbon for consumption. Speaking about those phases, those steps, which are part of the preparation process, i.e. Shrita, Kabbalah, right? Those bring to Achila. You need them to get the carbon consumed, to be fit for consumption. So clearly, people can relate to Kabbalah too. Yochel Shani Marbe, of what if he's thinking during Shvi Shiraim, which is uh, pouring the leftover blood, which is not an essential aspect of the carbon. Sometimes there aren't even leftovers, uh, right? But if there is leftover, he's going to pour it on his beach. And he's thinking during that moment, a machshav of pigal, does it take effect? Or, vaktar seimurim, while he's burning the fats, as important as it is, it's not critical to the process. So what, have, what happens if he's thinking during those? Activities. No, they don't count. Because that's not technically part of the preparatory 
phase of the carbon because those aren't really essentials. Uh, a pigle plan only connects to something which is essential. Hamakrav here, lo is um, relates to. Uh, Akrova actually relates to the Zrika, because that's the uh, the essence of the Akrova. That's that's what brings Akrova. That's what brings the, the you know the. That's the culmination of the of the Akrova process, right? So. Why does the Torah have to single out Zrika? Relating to people, Zrika Bechlan Hoyse really Zrika was included in the initial presentation of the pasuk, things which bring to Achila. Any part of the preparatory process of the carbon. Why does the Torah single out Azrika as being unique? To serve as a catalyst, as a precedent, as a model to connect others to it and tell you. You have to be similar to Azrika to qualify for pigle activation. Let me have to tell you. Ma Azrika, just like Azrika is Miuchedes, what's unique about Azrika? She avoida umakaras kapara. It's part of the avoida. It's one of those, you know, avoid the steps. And it's critical to the success of the carbon. Without Zrika, you have no carbon, right? You have no kapara. And therefore, if during Zrika, he had a machshava of pigle, it takes effect. Avkol, avoid, makavis kapara, likewise. You can only include other aspects of the process, which are deemed avoid, and are critical to the kapara. For instance, Shrita, Kabbalah, Hailacha, but not pouring the leftover blood, not burning up the fats, as important as they are. They're not critical to the kapara of the carbon. Yotzo Shvicha Shiraim, Dr. Simurn, Shein Makrin Sakapara. It's a mitzvah, but not Makrin Kapara. Okay, bottom line is we find that Pigal, which transpired during the Kabbalah Saddam, so during collection of the body, he was thinking, I'm going to feed the carbon beyond its time, is considered Pigal, unlike the previous price, huh? which we learned as telling us that people can connect to the Kabbalah. How does this work? Answer is more very simply. The answer is You know when it doesn't work? If he does a shechita on condition, you know, thinking, planning, I'm going to be doing the Kabbalah tomorrow beyond, you know, the allowable time. That's not Pigel, because Pigel is strictly thinking to serve the carbon, to consume the carbon. Kabbalah is not serving or consumption. There's no Pigel on that. Huh? The second verse, that Pigel can connect to Kabbalah, is speaking to Omar Haranim Kabbalah Dhamma. We're speaking that while he's doing the Kabbalah, he's planning on serving the carbon in a week's time. Amnas Lishbek Shuraim Lamacha. To pour the leftover blood tomorrow. That certainly is pigle. Again, very simple. The, the machshava pigle has to take place during an essential avoida, such as shkita, kabbalah, elocha, zrika. But what's he planning? What's he scheming? To serve the carbon, to do the zrika, to feed the flesh in a week's time. One more question. In the most recent b'risa, we sort of excluded those activities doesn't affect them we seem to exclude them from the machshava pigle but none of our tanya have a bright which indicates otherwise but even those are included in the pigle uh, arrangement perhaps pigle only relates to eating of the flesh in a week's time what about spilling of the leftover blood or burning the fats in a week's time having that in mind that's also pigle. It's a duplicate. Two types of consumptions. There are two types of consumptions by a carbon. One is what you offer on the Mizbech, or one is what people eat. The other uh, consumption relates to the Mizbech. Spilling of the uh, leftover blood is also considered Achila. Uh, burning of the fats is too considered Achila. Why can't pigle relate to them? Like Asha, again, the answer is very simple. It depends when he was thinking. 
Hod Amar Harani Zayrik Amanas Lishbech Shrayim Lamachar. Sure, if doing this Rika, which is an essential step in the Avoid, it's one of the four primary steps. He's thinking, okay, I'm doing this on condition, with the intention, with the plan of doing Shvi Hashraim tomorrow. That's certainly his pigle, because both conditions have been met. When did it take place? During an essential Avoid. What was he thinking? To serve the Mizbeach beyond its time. That's, of course, pigle. But however, in a case where he's planning on serving the Mizbeach tomorrow, burn the fats tomorrow, but when was he thinking that thought? During Shvicha Shiraim, that doesn't count, because Shvicha Shiraim is not an essential part of the process. So, pretty simple. We have a very straightforward uh, system regarding Pigel. What generates Pigel? So, Pigel again is having a mind to serve the Mizbeach, which can include the dam of the carbon, the fats of the carbon, whether it's the Zrika or the Shri Hashirayim, or Simur, or it relates to Achilas Adam, personal consumption, the Kayan eating the carbon, the owner eating the carbon, beyond its allowable time. Now when is he thinking that thought? When is it taking place? It must transpire during Something which is considered avoida, that's ma'keves kapar, an essential part of the avoida process, during the preparatory part, but only those that are essential, such as shchita, kabbalah, elach, and shrika. Having said that, having understood that halach really does qualify for pigal creation, amar vidu be'yavichia, have an interesting halach. Shamati, I once heard, Shatvilas etzba mefagelas, bechatas apnimis. So, there are two types of carbon chatas. External chatas, meaning that the blood is placed on the external mezbech and the azara. We have internal chatas, whose blood is placed on the internal mezbech and the hechel. Regarding which the Torah describes the kain as dipping his finger, vetavol a kain as its boy, he has to dip his finger into the blood and place it manually in the mezbech. So if they did the shechita, the Kabbalah, Haylacha, he's holding by the, by applying the blood on the Mizbeach. He must dip his finger in to enable that. How do you define that act? Is it part of the Haylacha? Because it's part of transporting the blood to the Mizbeach. It's an essential part of the Haylacha. So perhaps it's labeled as such, in which case, just as Pigal can relate to the Haylacha, can relate to Tfilas Etzba. So during the Tfilas Etzba, he's thinking, it becomes pigle. Or do we say, no, it's just sort of a preparatory act to the you know, application of the blood. It's not really considered an avoida which qualifies for pigle. So he says, I heard it does. Shamati, I heard from my teachers, from my... Shadvilas Espa, that while he's dipping his finger into the blood, mefagelas, if at that point he thinks a machshava of pigle, it makes it pigle, bechatos apnimis, regarding the internal chatos, which has that uh, a dipping, you know, requirement. That was his halacha. Shoma Ilfa. So Ilfa heard the halacha from him. Omar came to Rav Pada. He presented to Rav Pada. Omar and he responded uh, by challenging this notion. He says, "Look, where is the source for pigal in the Torah? The pasuk that we quoted earlier is actually by Yishlamim. Now by Yishlamim, there's no dipping of fingers. How could you?" Go beyond Shlomim. <laughs> How could you invent a new element of Pigal unfound in the source material, which is the Shlomim? He says, Klum Lamadnu, Pigal, Elamish Shlomim. Where do we learn Pigal from? From Shlomim, right? Now, you have to model the Shlomim. Ma Shlomim, just like by the Shlomim, ain't Philas Etzba, Mephagelas, man. There's no Pigal by Philas Etzba. There's no Philas Etzba. So you can't expand upon that. Avchatos, likewise by Achatos. Even though there is Tfilas Etzba, but it doesn't qualify for Pigal. It can be better than the source, better than Shlomim. Ain't Tfilas Etzba and Fagelas Behen? Says, well, what do you mean? Since when are you learning everything from Shlomim? Is that true? That all Karbanas learn from Shlomim? Apparently, we can't, because if you're going to follow the Shlomim to the T, it's not going to work. You see, there's another rule when it comes to pigle. It has to be purely pigle. If there's any other 
interfering elements, any other deficient elements in the process, such as if he throws in uh, you know, a thought of Shlele Shema, it's not Pigel. So Pigel is like a flip side of a proper carbon. We have a proper carbon, we have a very improper carbon, but it has to be purely improper. <laughs> if there's any other, uh, uh, any other uh, ingredients mixed in, it's not going to be Pigel. It would be possible, but it doesn't become Pigel. For instance, if it's a uh, Chatas, where he's trying to make it pigel, and he throws in also shleg shma, it's not pigel. But that won't really hold true if we're required to follow, follow the, and copy the model of, of shlamim, where shleg shma doesn't disqualify the carbon, right? Only by a chatos or a pesach. So imagine he's doing a chatos with pigel, but he throws in shleg shma. So it depends. If we learn strictly from shlamim, so by Islam, Shlom Shema doesn't affect the pigle, so it wouldn't affect the Chatz. See, the Chatz would become pigle, but it's not so. Ima Shlomim. If that were so, that we're really copying the Shlomim to the T, so just like the Shlom and Shlom Shema ain't mighty midday pigle, aside from thinking pigle, you also think Shlom Shema, it's not going to... It's not going to stop the pigle from happening because Shlele Shema is not a factor by Shlom. It doesn't disqualify the Shlom. So you're going to tell me, Af Chatash Shlele Shema in Moitzim de Pigle? When he's trying to make a Chatash Pigle, he's going to throw in Shlele Shema, it's not going to affect the pigle? Of course it is. Rashi brings a Mishnah later in the Chavtes, it does. If while he was making pigle by a Chatash, he also had in mind Shlele Shema. It's not pigle, apparently. He doesn't have to follow Shlom to the T. Elamai Yislach Amem, see, must say, Mirabui de Kroi Kaasya that we have other sources in the Pesuk that um, that apply Pigel to other Karbanas as well in which case each, each Karban follows its own uh, system likewise regarding dipping the finger by the Chatas it's an essential part of the Chatas process it can uh, generate Pigel who cares that it's unfound by the Shlom I'm going to show So likewise, he also presented the same halacha. Bali is ushamati. Bali is an upper, uh, upstairs. Over here, in this place, I heard shetvilas etzba mafagelis. And in fact, pigel can be generated by tvilas etzba, just as we said before. Toibar, Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish. So once again, he asks a similar question. He says, "Klum lom du pigel al mishlamim." We can't invent our own uh, pigel. Everything comes from the shlamim, who's the father source. And over there, there's no tefillah zetzpa. Ma shlomim ain't tefillah zetzpa. Fagelas ben shlakva yishlomim. Well, there's no tefillah zetzpa. So you can't say pigel relates to tefillah zetzpa. There is no tefillah zetzpa. Av chatas. Let's assume. Look, by the chatas as well. Although, technically, there is tefillah zetzpa. But it cannot generate pigel. Ein tefillah zetzpa. Fagelas ben. And once again, the Gemara responds in kind. V'chi akol mishlomim amdu. Really? Everything learns from mishlomim? And with the same question, because if so, if to compare it perfectly to a shlamim, where if there's a shleil shma ingredient in the pigel, it's not going to interfere with the pigel because shleil shma is not a factor by shlam. So you're going to say the same by the chatas? Av chatas, shleil shma in the pigel? If he throws in shleil shma by the chatas, it's not going to become pigel? Of course it will. It's not going to take away the pigle. Of course, it will take away the pigle. Because, by Achatas, if the Shlug is Shema, that disqualifies the carbon and interferes the pigle process from, take, from being activated. So, clearly, we don't have to model the Shlaman perfectly. Amaris Rechanina, no, actually, everything has to come from Shlam. In, yes, correct. Everything comes from the Shlomim. As to your question, let me respond. Chatas will have to compare itself to Shlomim for the pigle to take effect. Because you see, even by the Shlomim, it has to be purely pigle. Suppose he introduces another element which interferes with the pigle. You're right, not Shalei Lishmai. Shalei Lishmai by Yishlam is not a factor, but Chutz Lam Kaima is. Chutz Lam Kaima is where he was thinking that he's going to process it, you know, outside the Beis HaMikdash. It's not Pigel, but it makes it possible. So if he has that type of thought, of course it interferes with the Pigel process from taking effect. 
So correspondingly, by a chatas, anything which invalidates the chatas, like a shloy l'shma, which corresponds to chutzlam kamei by the shlom, so it is a parallel system. It's not exactly the same, but conceptually, it's a parallel system. Any interfering factor blocks the pigle from taking effect. It so happens that by a shlomim, shlo is not an inter- interfering factor, but shlomim kami is, and it will interfere with the pigle, and the corresponding by the chatas. Whatever is considered an interfering factor in its context, such as shlo lishma, will interfere with the pigle. So it's perfectly in sync. However, chutzlam kaima, since the thought of chutzlam kaima, paisel b'shlamim, which invalidates the shlamim, but shlo lishma and the thought of shlo lishma, although it doesn't invalidate the shlam, does invalidate the chat paisel b'chatas. So we draw a correlation. Ma chutzlam kaima, just like thinking chutzlam kaima, which is something which is paisel b'shlam, which invalidates the shlamim. Might even the pigle can interfere with the pigle from taking place. So if he inserts shlo lishma kaima in the pigle process, there's no pigle. Have shlo lishma and paisel b'chatas, likewise by the chatas. Where even a thought of Shlele Shema interferes and makes it puzzle, Moitzi and the Pigel will interfere with the Pigel from taking effect, so it's a perfectly corresponding and matching system. Amr Abidmiyam, no! Moitzi the Tavra, from its own side, it will be refuted. It means to say, this correlation doesn't really work. The fact is, refute themselves. Why? You're comparing um, Achatas to Ashlamim. The shloim shma by the chatas compared to the shloim bim kaimim by the shlamim. You can't compare one to the other. Mal chutzlam kaimim hoist by shlamim. Shkei naik b'chal zvachim. There's something unique about chutzlam kaimim by the shlamim, because that element is all encompassing. It interferes with every carbon in the world. It has the power to invalidate any carbon. Toim b'shlo lishma is a post shlo lishma by the chatas, which is a very limited scope. Problem. It only affects the Pesach of so perhaps it doesn't have the same power. You can't compare. But bottom line is, the only way this whole thing can work is by saying as follows. Compare everything to a shlom, but in a limited sense. Not in a very technical, detailed sense. In a more, more of a conceptual sense. You say like this. El ma'is So apparently you have to say like this. Dover ha poisel behen moitzim de pigel. Whichever carbon you're looking at, if you find any element which makes the carbon possible, such as if it's a shlamim, if he's thinking shloi bim kaimai, makes the carbon possible. Is by a chatos, a thought of shloi lishma makes it possible. So conceptually, it's called Dover Hapoisel, something which invalidates the carbon. Moitziyam, the pigle, will uproot the pigle, will invalidate the pigle, will interfere and not allow the pigle to take effect. And likewise, Dover Hama'akev Ben Mevilim, the pigle. How is pigle generated? How is it implemented? How does it take effect? If the pigle transpired, the thought of pigle transpired during an act which is Ma'akev Ben, which is critical to that specific um, respective carbons processing. So again, we're talking conceptually. During an act which is deemed essential, then you could have pigle. At the same time, if he introduces another impeding element, something which is placed on that carbon, into the pigle mix, the pigle gets diluted and never takes effect. So again, regarding Islamim, this would translate as follows. If he was thinking the machshav of pigel during Shrita, Kabbalah, Halach, and Zrika, it becomes pigel provided there isn't another, you know, detrimental element interfering, such as Chuslan Kaimah, Yachanam, here as well by Yachatas. Just run the same formula. Dabra Paisal Ba Moisim De Pigel, Dabra Ma'akab Ba Mabil De Pigel. A machshav of pigel which took place during an act which is considered Ma'akibah, Shechita, Kabbalah, Halach, and Zrika, and also Tvilah Zetzpa, because by Echatas, it's critical. So again, it doesn't have to copy the Shlom perfectly. The concept does, but the, the, the um, implementation, well, that's specific. That's personal to each carbon, according to its uh, guidelines. Whatever is deemed Ma'akib in each respective carbon, allows for pigle to take place.
such as Tfilas Etzba by Echatas, which is necessary to its process. And likewise, if there's a Dabar HaPoysel Ba, such as Shloi Geshma, which is Poysel Dechatas, that interferes with the Pigel. So according to this, we seem to say that Tvilas Etzba is a candidate for Pigel. Omar of Mori, Afanana we find the same in the, uh, the Mishnah, Zach Lal. Here's the rule regarding Pigel. Not only can Pigel affect a, an animal carbon, can affect a, uh, a Mincha, right? A flower and an oil carbon which also features four distinct um, steps, which are considered primary steps, corresponding to the four steps by the carbon. Just as there we have Shechita, Kabbalah, Halacha, and Zerika, by the Mincha we have similar steps. We don't have Shechita, right? but we have Kemitza, he scoops a bit out of the carbon, which separates the heavenly part from the uh, regular part. Just like by the Shechita, where the Shechita separates the blood from the rest of the carbon. To take the blood on the Mizbeach. We have Kabbalah by an animal collecting the blood. We have Kabbalah by the Kmitza, putting the Kmitza in a Klisharis, in a holy vessel to elevate it and make it more Kaddish. We have transporting the blood, transporting the Kmitza to the Mizbeach. We have Zrika of the blood on the Mizbeach. We have Torah burning of the Kmitza on the Mizbeach. So they correspond to each other. And Kmitza will take place during one of those four steps. A uh, uh, pigle, I mean. Zaklal, here's the rule. Call out Kaimans. The Kaimans does Kmitza. Kli puts it in the Kli. Vamoilach transports, Vamakta burns. These are four primary steps of Avaida which allow for Pigal during those four steps. So the question is if we are really to match these to the four steps of the carbon, of the animal carbon, they don't really match perfectly. I can understand the correlation between Kmitza by the Menchan Shechit of the animal as we explained. Likewise, we skip to step three, Moilich, transporting of the Kmitza on a Moilich. It's like transporting the blood. Mak, the burning of the Kmitza on a Moilich. It's like the Zrika of the Dama Mizbech. But what about step two, Elonaisen Mikli? My new. When the Kayin places the Kmitza in the Kli, what does that compare to? Is there a parallel act? To that by the animal carbon, perhaps it's comparable to collecting of the blood in the clean. No, incomparable. We don't have to compare the two hansam and mela by an animal, it happens passively by itself. The blood just trickles in, as opposed to the mincha, where he's manually taking it, actually putting it in the clean. It's a different act. How can he compare? So the answer must be technical. elements are, are not so relevant to us. As long as they conceptually match, as we said before. The answer is since he can't do it without putting it in there. Apparently it's considered a prominent step of the process. In which case, Pigel can attach itself to that avoid. Here as well. Regarding our original question, dipping the finger by the chatas. Since it's not enough not to do it, means to say, it's required, it's critical. al Hanah Apparently it's part of the halacha, part of transporting the blood from Mizbeach. Oh, and though it's not found by all karbanis, but by Echatas, it is considered part and parcel, an integral part of the halacha process, and it allows for people. Lo, he says, no, not so quick. Lo, he says, no, You ask the question, how could you compare placement of the kaimits and the kli to collection of blood by an animal which happens by itself. No, it is similar. The Ka'amr is asked to your question, Hacham Amela. By the animal, it's happening passively. Hasam, as opposed to the Mincha, Iyu Kashak, he's taking it and putting it in, putting it in. Oh, it's still similar enough. Even since the Eid of Eid in both situations, Mat and Kli was being placed in a Kli. In order to get that elevated, you know, uh, Kedusha. What's the difference if it's active or passive? Mali Mamelo, who cares if it happens by itself? Mali, whether Koshakov Yop, whether he's placing it in there manually, either way, the end result is the same. It's being collected in the Klisharis, and that's the objective. But who says dipping of the finger by a chatas can be uh, labeled part of the halacha? You don't really have a proof to that, uh, to that point. And we'll see tomorrow, perhaps it's a machlekes tanoim. Okay, Rabbi Hashem, we'll see tomorrow. Okay, so in a nutshell, we discussed uh, the, uh, the basic fundamentals of the Pigel process, 
which entails a fellow planning on doing something past the allowable time, and it relates to both parts of consumption, shtei achilas, whether achilas mizbeach, achilas adam, serving him on the mizbeach, such as the blood, the fat, or having the kehanim or the owner consume the carbon past the expiration date. That makes pigel. When is that thought process taking place? It's transpiring during one of the um, essential steps of the akrova process, during the preparatory phase of the carbon, such as shrita and even kabbalah, as we concluded. Halacha and Zrika. As to the question of Tfilas Edzba, the consensus seems to be that it is considered a candidate for Pigel. And although you don't find a similar phenomenon by the Shlomim, it doesn't matter because we can still learn from Shlomim. Whatever is an essential part of the preparatory, what we call phase one of the carbon, allows for Pigel. And likewise, Tfilas Edzba by the Chatas. All the best to you and Atzlachara.